it's a pleasure. We've been looking to get you for a little while now, and, and it's, it's wonderful to see you. Whereabouts are you at this minute? I'm in Nashville today. I've been, we've been getting around quite a bit, but today I'm in Nashville. Oh, great. Um, I've got to ask you, because there's so many things I wanted to say to you, but you've got the new song out, Out the Cage, yeah. um, with Breland and also Nile Rogers. So multiple collaborations going on in the song. How did it happen? How, how did you all get together? Uh, I heard about Breland. I've known Niall for maybe about six years, so we, we're very good friends. Uh, and he, his contribution came about from me just calling him up, telling him I'm working on this song and <laughs> it really would be great if you would play guitar on it because it's got you written all over it. So, um, but Breland was where it started. Um, he came to my house one day and I, I, just an artist I was interested in and I said, it'd be great if we could get in the studio and see what, what happens if we try and create something, the two of us, because we come from such diverse worlds different approaches and yet I, I knew we'd find commonality if we got together and I brought this um, sort of uh, 90s English house fat boy slim rhythmic vibe into the studio and I said I want to write something with this I know I can I know we can write something with this I've always loved this energy and it would be just intoxicating if we could nail this and Breland said well, what does it make you feel like I said it makes me want to take off running or fight or break something or <laughs> I, something, you know, it's just, it's just really intense. And he suggested out the cage and we're, we were off and running, writing the song. And it's got that energy. You just hear it. And, and, and also it, it basically describes everything we've been going through for the last, you know, it seems like 20 years, but 15 months of lockdown on and off. Um, so it's perfect for this time. And it jumps out of the radio as well. Well, yeah, thank you. We, we, um, we wrote this in, it must have been around May of last year, wrote and recorded it at my house in May of last year. So it's certainly it was, it's very obvious what we were inspired by initially, but I, 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 we did want to write it so that it continues to be relevant and to anybody that's stuck in any situation in life, whether it's, um, negativity or, 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 or a crap job or, or a going nowhere relationship or just there's infinite things that we get stuck in or, or confined by and we just want to break out and we wanted to write this song for all of those people as well. And we can, we can all relate to a number of those different things over the years. <laughs> Maybe all of, all of them. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, if you're super, if you're super unlucky, then maybe, maybe you hit the jackpot with every, everything there. Um, I wanted to also talk to you because you've had a whole stack of working with other artists. So clearly the Pink song, One Too Many, which we love off The Speed of Now Part One. And you're also featured on the Taylor Swift album. So, I mean, you know, you, you're just going crazy with all these different people. I love collaborating. You know, I've, I've, I've always loved it because I'm a guitar player. So I guess, you know, you, you start by being in a band and collaborating immediately with, with your other musicians. So I've always loved collaborating. I've always loved um, the discovery of unexpected collaborations, whether it's with Pink uh, or Nile Rogers or Breland or Eric Church or whoever it is, just um, uh, Pitbull is one, on one of my tracks on a few albums ago. So for me, it's the really unexpected ones that I get most excited about. And um, do you have a, a wish list? I mean, clearly you've worked your way through quite a few already, but or, or, do you, um, or do you just take it as it comes or whatever opportunity comes your way? I really wanted to do something with Daft Punk and I was heartbroken that they <laughs> disbanded. So uh, that, that was somebody who was like probably top of my list of just... Um, artists who I really, really admire uh, the work that they have done in the studio because it's, it, uh, it's the highest level of that kind of um, craftsmanship. They're, they're just um, unbelievably great at it. So um, past that, there's probably, yeah, it's a big list of people, but they were high on the list. <laughs> And it clearly it takes you in completely different directions as well. Musically, you're working with all these different influences and so on. But do you find that sometimes, um, you know, when, you, when you've got these people, they're taking you to an area you might feel uncomfortable with, or are you just as an artist happy to go there and, and, and see how it all turns out? Um, all the above. I mean, I, I, it, it's the unexpected. You know, it's like a blind date, right? You show up and you're like, is this going to be a disaster? Is it going to, I don't know. But 
it's the only way for a, for a something really fresh and original to happen is, is, is that I remember recently seeing uh, somebody was telling me about a duet between James Brown and Pavarotti. And I'm like, Oh, I think you, I think you made that one up. Sure enough. There they are online on, you can find it on YouTube of Pavarotti and James Brown singing. It's a man's world. And it's unbelievable. And it's, that's a great example of two completely opposing worlds coming together and finding commonality. It's incredible. Well, first things first, I'm going to go and seek that out as soon as yeah. we finish talking on yeah. your recommendation. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this will do too. <laughs> but I've got to ask you on a wider subject, if you like. It's been, it's been a, you know, an unbelievable time for all of us over the last, you know, so many, so many months. And somebody like you, I'm guessing, I don't know if your dual location or you've obviously got the, the Australian connection, your, your American connection, and, and also when you're touring too. What sort of an impact has it had on, on especially someone like you? It's bad enough for us who just have our normal, you know, routine, but you're traveling all the time and then suddenly you can't. So how have no. you coped with it all? Uh, guys, it's a really good question. I, I, I didn't do so great at the beginning of it. Uh, when all the lockdown started happening, we were, we were in Nashville around March last year, March, April, and, I was working on this album on the speed of now and had gotten most of it finished, but I certainly wasn't finished. And suddenly it was like, can't go anywhere. Can't do anything. Can't go to studios. Can't have anybody come to the house. And I'm just like, uh, so I, I, I got a bit creatively paralyzed, honestly, cause I just, I didn't, I didn't know what to do or how to do it. So I just, I just thought I'd put on my comfy pants and sit on the couch and eat chips until it all blows over. That was my plan. <laughs> that, was, that, but that was my plan. I mean, I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I don't know what to do with it, you know? And I just froze. I really did. For, it felt like a month or something. And my, my team was like, are you going to finish your record? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. Not doing it. Not doing it. Sit right here. And, you know, it's like a, just a, just a, t so, uh, I, I finally got it together and, and got in the studio and worked a little bit and figured out how to just keep, keep flowing and keep moving forward. But it, it really took a lot of um, want and desire to be innovative and, and you know, find a new way. As, as we've all had to do clearly, but it's, it's, it's multiplied by many more times for the likes of you, like, like I said. So now that we look like, um, certainly here in the UK, we look like we're coming out of it to a degree, but I, I hate even, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Where, where are you looking ahead now? I mean, are, you want to get back on the road again? And is that your priority or are you working on yes. even more new music ahead of, of... The heartbreak was not getting, musically speaking, the heartbreak was not getting to take this album out live on the road because it's what I've done ever since I started making records is work on a recording, get it out there, have it and particularly to have it connect the way this album is connected in countries I've never even been to before, you know, Russia and uh, or China and just um, Latin America. And it's crazy that the places where this album has connected and I just want to get out and tour, you know, and the UK has been on our list for a long time and we were all set to play last October and had to cancel that. And, so I'm just ready to play. I'm really ready to come out and bring these songs to life with a real audience. And can you imagine as well, you know, the atmosphere in these places when you, when you arrive on stage and we're, we're desperate to get out and, and see things and, and mm. go to concerts and festivals and so on. You're desperate to perform for us. It's going to just be a, a, an amazing vibe, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, we need it. You know, we need that sense of um, togetherness as well. It's really, really key, uh, you know, because with a sporting, it's the one beautiful thing about music, because with a sporting event, you've already got the audience split. With a concert, everybody is, is in the, the zone. Everybody's in the song. We're all singing the same song, not just metaphorically, but literally. So it's such a beautiful experience and so needed right now. That's it. I've never thought of it like that before, but of course, there's no opposing team when you when we all show up for Keith Urban. We all want, you know, we all want him to perform and be, and be top of his game. Um, well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure getting a chance to talk to you. I hope yes, you sir. will get out on the road soon and, and please get over to the UK at some point when you can, will you? 
Oh, we're coming. Don't worry. It's next year. It's just a case of when next year. That's, that's it. All right. Well, I'll be yes. keeping a very close eye on that. And when I find out, I'll tell everybody else who watches this and listens to us too. But Keith, it's been a pleasure and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Eamon. Nice to talk to you, mate.